Hey guys, it's Rod with Civil Advantage Firearms Training here. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Bill C42 for Dummies. Hopefully the videos have been helpful. Anyway, today we're going to talk about the provision in Bill, Bill C42 for the six month grace period after someone's PAL expires. So let's uh, start the video like we started the others. Let's read from the Coalition for Gun Control's website and see what their opinion of this provision is because it's important to see all sides. All right, I'm going to read this real fast. There's a link in the description box if you want to go to their website and see it for yourself. Create a grace period for people that have had a five-year license uh, that has expired. In eliminating the registration for, of firearms, the conservatives argued that the firearms license was sufficient to know who owns guns. Now they are relaxing those requirements. Renewing licenses ensures that information about gun owners is kept current and reduces the risk potentially dangerous people will have access to guns. A valid license is the only information that the police have to tell them that someone may own non-restricted guns now that the registry has been destroyed. Turning a blind eye to gun owners who do not comply with the licensing requirements will put police officers and the public at risk. It will also hamper police investigations and in some cases hamper prosecution of gun crimes. So uh, the easiest way to explain this is I have a PAL, in my case I've had one for 10 years, about 9 years actually, and I'm going to have to renew it at some point in the near future. Well, let's say uh, my wife is battling breast cancer and she's not going to make it. Or maybe I'm battling prostate cancer and I'm making some progress. Uh, maybe one of my children were killed in a car crash. Or maybe I'm just forgetful. Maybe I've got lots going on. Maybe I'm building a career and I'm just forgetful. And my license expires. Well, what happens is that puts me in a position uh, to where, and it doesn't matter what the excuse is, but it puts me in a position to where I'm in, no, I'm knowingly in unauthorized possession of a, of a firearm, and that's a real charge in the Criminal Code Part 3, Section 92. So before we really get started, let's see what the, what the penalty is for that, because it's important. So here's the Criminal Code. Let's have a look here under punishment. Every person who commits an offense under subsection 2, 1 or 2, is guilty of an indictable offense. So there's no summary conviction here. In the case of a first offense, to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 10 years. So 10 years, and it's indictable right off the bat. In the case of a second offense, 10 years plus one. In the case of a third, 10 years plus two. So the criminal sanctions for forgetting that your license has expired, no matter what your excuse is, or even if you have an excuse, is, is absolute destruction of your life complete destruction of your life. I don't, I don't know anybody that is law-abiding enough to hold a PAL that this wouldn't destroy their lives. But whatever. Um, so here's the thing. So the, uh, the, again, the media and the coalition uh, for gun control and some people, some, some of the public, uh, their opinion is, is that if Bill C-42 passes and you get that six month grace period, that you know, a whole gang of these expired PAL holders are gonna go and they're gonna light up police or they're gonna light up the public. They're just gonna go out with their guns. And you know what I feel like when I'm saying things like that? It's inflammatory, and I feel that, that it's, it's, uh, I'm exaggerating. But you know what? I, didn't, I don't even know why I have to make a video about this, because think about that for a second. I haven't been in peaceful possession of a firearm for 10 years. In some cases, people would be on their fifth PAL. 20 years, and all of a sudden it's gonna be expired and now the public's at risk? No reasonable person in this country could ever justify saying, yeah, it's, it's, this is risky. How can it be risky? I didn't murder anybody for the first 10 years and all of a sudden, hey, now that I don't have a license, I'm going to murder people. It's still illegal to shoot people. Second thing, the coalition says, turning a blind eye to gun owners who don't comply with licensing requirements will put police officers and public at risk. So the part that I take exception in there is turning a blind eye to non-compliant owners. Let me, uh, this should be interesting to you. I'm going to throw up a meme that the National Firearms Association was circulating around for a while. It's pretty strong, just to let you know. And you're going to see what our values are in Canada. You're going to see what, what kind of people we are. Now, if you're a, a good person, you look in the mirror, you're like, you know what, I'm a good person. I'm politically active. I'm trying to do the best that I can. I don't want to see people shot and all the rest of that stuff. And if you're pro-gun control and you're a good person, you really need to think about this for a second. So here it is. So this thing was circulated around for a while. Again, as I said, pretty strong. But this is real. I looked at, I found this information and it's legitimate. So you have Lynn Henshaw, who was a Korean War vet. He had this pistol in his house that he had bought, you know, 30 years ago. 
and uh, was still in his house way before the law changed. He had no idea. He's doing whatever he's doing in life. He's not constantly monitoring the, the television or monitoring the, the government's website to see if any laws have changed. So he has this pistol, and unfortunately the pistol was a little bit too short, therefore it was prohibited. And a, uh, a home care worker, because he's disabled, you know, found this pistol, called the police, of course, and he was looking at a mandatory minimum three years. And that's something I didn't mention from the outset. It's mandatory minimum three years in jail. So he's looking at three years in jail. And then on the other side, we have Hod Marshall, who is a, a, a priest. So his sins are triple strength, right? He's a person that you're supposed to implicitly trust. But apparently, he raped 16 kids throughout his whole career. In fact, his nickname was Happy Hands. Happy Hands Marshall, because of his affinity for touching uh, young boys. He rapes two more kids, gets six months house arrest. So this is where our value system is. On one hand, you have the Coalition for Gun Control saying that if you forget to renew your license, think about if you're, if you're a driver, you forget to renew your driver's license and you're going to get 10 years in prison? That will destroy your life. Do you deserve to have your life destroyed? And on the other hand, they're like, oh yeah, well, gun control is the biggest issue in Canada. This pedophile thing, whatever. Right? This guy's ruined 20 people's lives. So that should speak volumes to you as a Canadian. That should really be offensive. Like, it's offensive to me. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you it's not. So to wrap it up, for the Coalition for Gun Control to tell us that we're turning a blind eye by not putting like Lynn Henshaw in jail for three to ten years for peaceful possession of a firearm they never, they never threatened anyone with, I think it really undermines the legitimacy of the coalition and it undermines the legitimacy of any uh, elected official or anyone in our society, your next door neighbor, if they think that that's okay. Anyway, something to think about. Hopefully it was helpful. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can at CivilAdvantage1 or you can find us on the net at www.civiladvantage.com. Thanks and we'll see you next time.